can you can use this command for BTF tool to dump it and, 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 and see the output. You can also get it formatted as C code, which is more practical. But to see the up to see the raw output, you can see all the numbers referring to each other. Uh, today it is exported via SUS kernel BPF, <coughs> BTF, and module since 5.11. Um, we have the main file, uh, uh, VM Linux, we have ID one. And, and the modules uh, are sort of, um, they use the last ID in the VM Linux and build on top of that because that means that the modules can save space by referring to the IDs used uh, in, in VM Linux so they don't have to define the, the type uh, U64. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and then use yeah user space can also have BTF sections and and this is known as local BTF and there's an, another helper function uh, that you can use to extract the local ID uh, and the numbering will start from one. So the question is if we can use this uh, these IDs to to identify the layout of of the BTF. Uh, so I explained before the type IDs I could look up. They're actually not unique because it, they will repeat again in, in, in different kernel modules and basically in, in different BTF objects. Um, and I think you can also from user space load these local BTF or load other BTF in, that will also get an ID. Beamlegos gets uh, ID one and the modules get assigned dynamically when loading. Uh, and the same for user objects. So the idea is to, that we discussed on the mailing list, <coughs> was to have this full BTF ID, the 64 bits, which is a combination of the object and the type ID, and the lower and the higher uh, 32 bits. Um, so back, back to XDP hints and this metadata area. So the, the Mises data has some funny properties, which is that it grows backwards from where the packet starts. Um, it must be four byte aligned and we have a limited size. And the prepare programs can, can play with this area also, so they can adjust, do the adjust Mesa that works today. We have the verify binary checks and all this kind of stuff. There's a gotcha here, which, but let's just move on. Uh, <clears throat> so let's look at the expected users of, of these XTP hints. The obvious user is BPF programs themselves, XTP and CC hooks, and they can use these, these, these helpers to get uh, adjusted uh, the, the layout. It's great, but I also have a use case where I want to go from XTP to X SKB conversions. <coughs> we already had that today in, in VETH. And, and CPU map, I want them to, to be able to, to have these traditional hardware offloads transferred in because we're losing that today when we are redirecting um, into CPU map or, or VHH, we're losing the traditional hardware offloads and that's, that's kind of sad, we want that back. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and then we got, you can also chain prepare programs that could communicate with this state and the last user is AFXDP that wants to consume this. Um, we have users at Intel and we have users and, 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 and in, in wind turbines that wants to use this. Uh, that, that means that the user space have to decode the BTF information themselves to understand the, the Mesa data area. I've, people have complained a little bit about it, so I've, I'm just coding it up for people. I have examples so they can do that. Um, so the motivation from, for XTP to SKB conversion is, is my moonshot idea with, with uh, NIC drivers without SKB knowledge. Um, but this, for the sake of time, let's just skip that. Uh, so the other motivation is that at some point, we do it in software first, but at some point I want hardware to produce these XTP hints. And, we know it's possible for the hardware because it's just next to the DMA area. It just needs to shift the DMA area a little bit and then put some metadata there. 
Uh, on the mailing list, there were some other proposals that wanted to take care of engineers. Uh, I'm saying BTF is flexible. Let's, let's add, add this later when the hardware appears. So let's explore the solutions uh, with the current approach. Yeah, <clears throat> so I want to decouple uh, things with the BTF ID and put the BTF ID in the metadata. So this will be this full BTF ID value as the last member of, of the, the metadata area. Uh, and we want that, so I think it was Bjorn, the AFXDP maintainer that came up with this idea, that we can then, AFXDP can just do a, a negative offset on the packet header, and then look at this ID, and then multiplex on, on, on that ID, and then it basically becomes at a, at a known offset, and, and then AFXDB can, can decode and knows, knows the layout of, of the metadata and how big it is also from, from this, this uh, ID. <coughs> then I extend the flags in XTP buff and XTP frame, and we also need some flag on AFXTP. Just, just say this is enabled. And because we have the full ID, we identify what module it is. We need this when we are redirecting into VHH because it can come from different modules. So we don't know because if the, it would be easy if I'm just running XTP on the, on, the, on the same receiving interface, then I know it will be from the same module, right? Uh, because I'm running on the driver. Um, so this decoupling, I call it decoupling because I don't have to have a fixed XTP structure, lock it down or somehow. <clears throat> it's nice because I can just change layout per packet. I just need to update this ID to tell what the layout is. Um, it makes XTP to SKB conversion harder uh, because I would need a sort of a lookup table to see if it's compatible and contains the existing hardware floats the SKB knows about and update that. So step two is I extend it with a, a common struct uh, that the net stack knows about the existing hints we already know and uh, uh, described. We still place the, the full BTF ID inside the metadata as the last member. And then I extend with one more flag that says this is compatible with the common, common uh, layout. <clears throat> and that this helps the XTP the SKP use case quite a lot. Uh, then I, I can just code it in standard C. <clears throat> but for example, AFXTP must not, and user space must not consider this like the UAPI. It's only described via BTF, and they must decode the BTF information uh, with, with this. <coughs> uh, and, and this is what's in my patch sets. So this is an example of the layout <coughs> um, that is described via, via BTF. And the last member is the BTF full ID. So we also have some flags, which are very important for understanding the, the What's, what's in the structure and what's, what's uh, enabled and not or, or activated, right? <clears throat> but I also want to use BTF for the flags. So the next is the flags dumped from, from, from BTF. So people should also use these, and they're still not your API. You have to decode it and use BTF to get res resolution on, 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 on what, what they mean. And I, there's the checksums, which are the first two, two, two bits. Um, I map those directly to, to what the SKB has of, 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 uh, of information, like the checksums, non, unnecessary, complete, and partial. And so I can just map it directly and use that in the SKB. And I'll refer, refer in, the, in the comment to the documentation for, for the SKB. Um, so this is how a, a driver-specific uh, struct uh, looks like. So in, in the bottom of the struct, because it grows backwards, we have the XTP hinge common. And in this case, it's I40E uh, that has uh, extra the hash uh, protocol type uh, 
information. So it would actually tell you <coughs> when you when you have on when you're on this driver, it's specific for this driver. You can check if it's uh, UDP, TCP, uh, SCTP, and there was I think there was one more protocol you could could see, and you know if it is encapsulated, and you know if it's IPv4, or IPv6. You can get that information out of it, while this thing that gets you get down in the SKP is only if it's layer four or layer three uh, hitters. You don't know anything more about that. This way, we we expose that in a, in an easy way. Um, so that's how the layout uh, can do. But how do we export this uh, to user space, like? And do we really need a new UAPI to export it? I'm saying, no, just use BTF. Um, so the proposal is basically name, naming convention. So like I think you saw here, I named this struct XTP hence underscore I40E, right? Uh, so I can just find, to figure out what this driver supports, I can go in and pass the BTF information and then search for stuff called <coughs> XTP underscore hints to understand what this driver can, can provide in, 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 the, in the different packet layouts. That's the one in my user space program. In AFXTP, I have to decode and be able to identify and handle those I care about. Um, <coughs> Yeah, um, yeah, so that's, that's the way drivers can figure, figure out that. So an extension of this is, I'm not sure it's a good idea or not, is that each, each NIC driver simply defines a union called XTP hints underscore union, which contains these. This means that my, my BTF parser just have to find this union and then follow decode that union and find the IDs that this union points to. And then I know what this driver supports. Um, <clears throat> one complication is that the metadata grows backwards. So you have to have this padding of the union, union which can kind of look ugly. Uh, but it, it could be easier for the driver because it actually has a type for all the different metadata areas. So it, and this is how it ended up looking, my proposal. Uh, so in the I4DE driver, I also have an XTP hint that contains the timestamp. And I have the normal hints. And I also show here I can have the, the, the common hints. Uh, I don't know if it's too bad or I don't think it's too bad with the, with the padding. Uh, but that would be a way to 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 export it without introducing new any UAPI. It's just naming conventions, just a convention that every driver will have a struct with this name. You have to pass that to figure it out. Um, so the future work, so I think I covered the receive side. Um, future work is that uh, Manus, he promised he will look at the, the transmit side, the AFXTP uh, maintainer. Uh, so TXI is basically asking the hardware to pro perform an action for us, like do the checksum of floating. We also want to do that. I'm not quite sure where we, we have to put some hook in, in the driver, we have to do some driver changes, which is annoying, but basically the drivers are already doing this today, taking the information from the SKB and put it in, in <coughs> that into the transmit descriptor. So it, it's, you know, it's doable, it just requires some work. Um, and then we have the, and one thing to remember is I also want to have on the transmit completion events, I also need something there. Like when, because the hardware also return hints when it's done transmitting the packet, which is like the transmit time timestamp. Uh, we also support that today uh, with, with SKBs. Um, and then I'll help user space developers write up some up some code up to decode the BTF. And maybe we should create a, a library with with with, with this somehow. 
uh, to make it a little bit easier. Another thing is we could extend BTF tool to list these available XTP hints to, to just to we adopt the naming convention and say this is how we export it and BTF tool can for drivers list it to make it more consumable by people, but we basically didn't introduce any UAPI. So I tried to keep time. <laughs> I spoke a little quick because we lost some time on Togo's session. Uh, so questions? So oh, um, my question is with using kind of ETF IDs, type IDs together. Um, how do you manage the lifetime of these BTF objects? Because you kind of use the BTF ID from user space, you get a file script that you take a ref count on the in kernel object and that kind of makes sure that everything stays around for you to use. But imagine from AFXTP, you can kind of get a random packet with a random ID and then you're going to have to look that up. What happens if the yeah, ETF that's, is removed that's from what, the kernel? What I did in my patch is that I, I took a, on the, on the BTF object in the module self, allowed us to take a reference count or, or increment the reference count for the entire BTF for the, that the module provides. So it will stay there on, until the module unloads. But you could still have the user space uh, <clears throat> like trying to ident and looking for these IDs, right? That, that comes in while the driver has been unloaded. But it doesn't matter because it's, there's no, it's just the ID, that's what I mean, that's sort of decoupled from the user space have to have a reference count to make it sure it's there. That's what I mean by de decoupling through the ID. As in the user space, sorry, what, what would user space do? So if user space will have, when the, when the driver was, was loaded, it would have, 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 have a table that it knows this, this I, I like this ID, I, like, I want this ID, but once the driver is unloaded, it still looks for the ID, but the ID will never come, right? Ah, oh, right, okay. But I think we can reuse, reuse IDs for BTF objects. But the IDs for kernel objects are not reused immediately, right? It should be very, very, very unlikely. You have to wrap. Uh... I guess like the expected use case would be that while driver is up, you can download the sense uh, of the BTF object, right? Like yeah. parcel the types, then attach program. And if after that kernel is unloaded, uh, module is unloaded, it doesn't matter. Like it's just IDs, right? So memory access. Yeah, and and so the use case where it could happen, like because it's if it's loaded on the driver that 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 XTP hints are coming from, it will obviously be taken down because the driver is unloaded, so it cannot. But we could have it in the the VHH that we are redirecting into that all of a sudden gets an ID or is, is looking for an ID that cannot appear anymore. That program will be fair program will still be loaded, right? But it, I, I don't. Yeah, so like if you're talking about like whether DBPF, DBPF will do all the allocations when you load the program. So like if your program already got the uh, packet, then like you you have all, like all the core allocations happen, right? Yeah. If it's AFXDP, presumably like the AFXDP application will parse the BTF just when like they set up everything initially. So like by the time that it gets packets, it also has all the Yes, that's how I implemented it. I made a very strong point of, of for the AFXTP people, don't look it up on every packet. Like it doesn't, don't pass the PTF information on every packet. Do it in at setup time, right? And I, I coded it up for, for, for those users that used it. So just one remark, I wouldn't put the, this BTF full ID into the struct itself. Well, first of all, it's like misaligned right now with your data structure. It's not U64, it's actually two U32s. Uh, yeah. But like also why, why are you demanding everyone to put it as a last member if you just know that it's there in the memory and just dictate that it's there and that's it. it so the it, hint itself should, it, it, should uh, declare like the useful new information, not the, the one that like you know that it's there, right? I, I, I do hate that I'm spending that many bytes on, on the 
on the, on the BTF ID, but I'm good. I'm doing it for the AFXDP user, so they they have it. No, no, I understand. I'm saying like don't include it into the struct definition itself. Just dictate that like last eight bytes of the XDP metadata is the BTF full ID. Yeah, oh, you could do that. Yeah, so we don't actually define it. It's but yeah, so it's just mandatory that it moves. Will be just be there. That's what you're saying. So, uh, quick comment. So, like this whole <clears throat> storing ID in the packet in every packet because of XDP, I really don't see how like user space would deal with it. Like, imagine doing like switch statement per packet and then do different things potentially with this every ID feels like like any kind of performance benefits from hints that come with the driver will be completely destroyed by this, like, let's do switch statements for every packet and check the ID with its matches and so on and so forth. So just, like, doesn't seem worth it. It's like, like you, you're trying to improve performance on one side, but then, like, it gets down it, the drain in another. It's, it's not then, only improving performance. The use case I have is in a wind turbine, we get the, 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 the hardware receive timestamping on only some of the packets uh, in it's, it's only a one gig interface, it's not for speed. Sure, uh, but still, like for FXDP, you don't need to do to pass all of the stuff all the way to user space because FXDP also has BPF pro can have BPF programs attached. And if they want to read the timestamp, let the read the timestamp before like user space does that run, and then it can like convert it to whatever uh, flags and necessary. So I would keep the packet only with the data that is there, that is like provided by the driver, and that's basically it. And let uh, VPF side, in both cases, in XDP and FXDP, like decide what to do with it. So you want to let a BPF program restructure it before it goes to AFXDP or? Yeah, before user space, like, user space like receives it, right? But but there is a still like if you have program can be run, right? We typically optimize it into knob uh, when it's not there, but it can be there just as well. It doesn't cost us anything like, bef like it's. But, but then, yeah, sure. But then you have to in invent a new scheme for, for, for that. No, it's like, but it's there already. Like the BPF has an ability to run in the FXDP case. Anyway, probably should take. Yeah, but, but then I need to store the information for the when I redirect into to VHH, I need to store the information somewhere, and then I need the BTF ID maybe in the uh, in in XDP buff. Uh, so w one thing uh, metadata can help with is that you can delay the uh, operating the cache with the headers. For example, if you're looking at the uh, hash. To know where to queue the packet, you can avoid touching the data before it's populated in the hash, gaining some more performance. So that's one thing metadata can help with. It has some use cases. I think I a, this would come down to benchmarking it, right? Because if the BPF program is demarking, and then you have to copy the data somewhere where the user space knows where it is. That may or may not be faster, and then switching on it depends on how many different IDs you're handling. It could also potentially be things. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the reason I place it in the, there, the ID is, is in, the, in the same cache line that, that I have to, they, I get the metadata down as, as a hint, and I need to trust this cache line anyhow. So it, 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 it won't cost me much more to read the ID. It's, it won't. I have uh, one last question. Um, did you look at the different XDP projects and analyze, you know, like what metadata they would be able to make use of first in order to accelerate them and what would be the most useful? Because I think like the, the Weave XDP support so that you can then populate the, the SKB is, is probably, I don't know, I, I wouldn't call it the primary use case, right? But I would probably go and, and look at the different projects that exist and how can we optimize them so that they can make reasonable use of the infrastructure here. Yes, so the request has most primarily been about the, the, the receive checksum and the, the, the receive hash. 
Uh, and and there's a project called CNDP from Intel, and there's a, uh, that wants this, and there's another project called IPDK that that wants this, which are both AFXDP based. And then I have to have the wind turbine user that wants the 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 the, the, the time stamping from the hardware, and they also want want the transmit launch time to send very specific uh, point in time uh, from AFXDP to send uh, the launch time. At, a, at, at these time windows. Okay, thanks. I'll cl we'll close the session. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.